My name's Kathy. Today's my birthday, and welcome to Luna Bird Book Club. So, hello, welcome to my October reading journal. Today, on this day of filming, it is my actual birthday, and of course, I wanted to include Luna Bird in the celebration. So, I've jumped outside for a couple of minutes to film a little book update because on your birthday you need to do the things that make you happy and Luna Bird makes me very happy and so I'm going to start with a little reading update of where I am up to first of all I have finished the book Tolkien's um, Farmer Giles of Ham and the Tales of Tom Bombadil uh, this is a fantastic slim Tolkien volume and um, so the Farmer Giles of Ham story is like a little old tale of um, a farmer who ends up facing up to a dragon um, and becoming a local hero. And then the second half of the book, the Tom Bombadil part of the book, is a collection of poems that are attributed to hobbits. <laughs> so the second half of the book is a hobbit book of poetry. Um, I've So this year I've been doing a Tolkien deep dive where I've been trying to read a lot of Tolkien's works and I've read a biography of his um, and I've really enjoyed going on this journey. So I've read this book before, this is a book that originally belonged to my dad and that I have pilfered somewhere along the way. So, and I remember when I first read it, I wasn't that into it. The story of Farmer Giles was a bit too like a kid's bedtime story for me and I was expecting something more complex like Lord of the Rings and Farmer Giles isn't that. This time reading it I found it very endearing and the poems because they're meant to be Hobbit poems on the surface they are quite frivolous and light-hearted and not very deep but some of them have quite a strong sense of pathos and towards the end of the collection the poems get darker in tone and there's a preface to the poems in which Tolkien explains that these poems have been collated from different Hobbit sources and some of the latter ones belong to or were written by Frodo and Sam and sometimes some of the darkness of their adventures of Mordor infiltrates the Hobbit culture of the rest of the poems um, so it's it's really fascinating it's it's very indicative of Tolkien who created such an in-depth fantasy world that you do feel like he is a scholar who has discovered these realms and bring them towards rather than a creator of them. Tolkien really masters the bittersweetness of praising a kind of idealized version of England and countryside and rural living in the context of inevitable change. Um, so yeah, that was the first book I read this month and I really enjoyed it and I enjoyed reading Tolkien again because it's been a couple of months now, uh, so that was really good. So yes, I have three other books on the go. The first book that I am reading is Brandon Sanderson's Rhythm of War. Um, this volume is keeping me very busy. I'm over the halfway mark now. Um, this is one of the Stormlight Archive books. It's the most recent one. There is one coming out by the end of this year, so I want to hurry up and read this uh, so I'll be ready for it. Um, I think at the end of my last vlog, I said, oh, the pace is a bit slow for me. I'm not sure if I'm enjoying it as much as I should be. And then like almost immediately after I finished filming that vlog, the pace just like kicked off. There was huge big events. I could not put it down for like a good few hundred pages. And I really, really enjoyed it. It's very dramatic. There are things Sanderson covers in this series that I've never seen covered in fantasy before. A lot about failure, a lot about defeat, and it's still exciting. So I've really enjoyed that. But then, recently, I have found like the pace has dipped again. So like I'm having to push through now, but I do know like probably pretty soon some big events will happen and the pace will kick off again. Um, and because this is such a chunky, heavy book to read, um, I've decided to have another book to read when I'm at work or if I'm on the go. So the book that my travel book is The Lost Bookshop by Evie Woods. Uh, this is about a bookshop in Dublin that is sometimes there and sometimes it's not. And three, people's, uh, and three people whose lives interconnect with this bookshop and with one another. And I'm enjoying it so far. It's kind of sweet there's a love story developing and there are a couple of 
tougher images there's um, a storyline that regards domestic violence and somebody who has an alcoholic parent so there's some serious stuff in there too but there's also a lot of sweet and whimsical in there too so there's light and shade in it and i'm enjoying that so far so that's my travel book and then the third book that i have on the go is an audio book and that is the uh, surreal and supernatural stories of walter de la mer um, and this is a bbc radio collection so they're adaptations of his stories produced for radio uh, so these are surreal and spooky short stories uh, written most in the 1920s uh, so it's like a classic but i've never really read Walter de la Mer's stuff before, so I've really enjoyed listening to them. Uh, it's fantastic audio recording. Um, got some brilliant British actors in there, including um, Anthony Stewart Head and Rich D. Grant. Yeah, they, they are very like kind of Victorian in feel, very gothic, very macabre. So they're fun to listen to, especially in October, the spooky month. So those are the books. I am reading or have read and because today is my birthday I have of course received some books as birthday presents and I'll share them with you too. So these are just like a little mini book haul let me get them ready on my knee. So first of all from my lovely mother-in-law she has got me Tolkien's letters from Father Christmas which has been on my book reading list. You okay cat? Don't fight. My cat is picking a fight with a stray that hangs around here. Do you want to see? Now the black one is Comet, my cat, and the tabby one is just a big bruiser who like properly thinks he's in charge of this garden. So I'm going to step in here because Comet is a baby and he won't win this fight. Hello, <laughs> They have both now climbed up a tree and are yelling at each other. It will end in tears and probably comets because he's a big baby. He's not well suited for defending his territory. Anyway, as I was saying, birthday present I received today because today is my birthday. And the first is Tolkien's letters from Father Christmas that I have received from my mother-in-law. This has been on my wish list all year. Um, so Tolkien had the tradition of writing letters to his children every December from Father Christmas. And after his death, his son um, collated them together in this collection. And then the next book I got um, was from my mum and dad. And this is the illustrated Lark Rise to Candleford. And this is an edition that matches an edition I have of um, tea, Cider with Rosie, Drinking Cider with Rosie by Laurie Lee. Um, so they're quite cute. So it's polka dotted and it's full of illustrations on the inside and pictures to go with the story. And I, oh hello Luna, I have never read Lark Rise to Candleford. I've never even seen an adaptation of it. So again, this is like another classic that I have never dived into and I'm looking forward to reading that. The third book I have been given today is from Rob and he got me Fables, an encyclopedia. So this is an A to Z um, encyclopedia of all things fables and because it's fabled it's not just writing there's little comic strips and illustrations in there so I believe like the author um, is Jess Nevins which she consulted quite heavily with the creators of fables um, Bill Willingham and Mark, Buck Mark Buckingham um, to put this together and uh, I'm really looking forward to reading this because Fables is such a massive series and the characters go on such journeys that it's actually quite hard to keep track of all the characters and it'll be handy for me to have a who's who's guide um, especially as we are doing the series with Rachel and it just looks absolutely beautiful I had no idea it existed at all so this was a really lovely surprise to get today Hi! It's still my birthday and Rachel's now here and look what she's got! A, a gift! And I'm here! All is here too! Happy birthday! <laughs> Hello! Ooh, it's green! What? The Hobbit Companion! I have never read this! 
Whoa. That looks so pretty. Yeah, it does. So it's, it's this man, David Day, has it's kind of just like here are some things from Lord of the Rings, and there's like really nice pictures in it and things. There are nice pictures. And like pictures. where Tolkien got got some of the words from and things like oh, that. Oh, I can I do. I thought you would like it as I, part of your Tolkien year. I do. I can got my Tolkien deep dive. I love it. Hee <laughs> hee. That is beautiful. Common characteristics of Celtic brownies and English hobbits. And I like donuts. Well, I keep saying this. I like donuts. I love donuts. Mm -hmm. Thanks, friend. You're welcome, friend. <laughs> We're back. All is here too. Hello. Hello. Uh, we had. I like donuts. <laughs> All I keep saying. I like donuts in a weird <laughs> voice. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, but it's keeping her amused. <laughs> Uh, we've had a really lovely day in Skipton. Because it's been your birthday. Because it's my... It is, so going to Skipton today has been like my little birthday treat. Uh, and it's been really fun. The first thing we did when we arrived is that we had a really lovely walk along the canal, then through the Skipton Castle Woods. The walk was so beautiful. I was trying to drizzle a little bit, but once we were under tree cover, it was fine. And there's some beautiful willow sculptures um, around. And, and the, there's... And there's a waterfall. And there were waterfalls and the trees were all uh, turning colours. Um, so I feel like I have made the most of autumn now. Like if I get one good walk in a forest area autumn, I'm really chuffed because like the time of year where the leaves are the perfect colour is actually quite slim. So I feel like we caught it today. So we walked around the castle walls. That was about a mile and a half walk. So not very long. Really sweet and lovely just beautiful atmosphere and we really enjoyed it uh i just i love walking so much it makes me really happy and i like donuts and all i like donuts and after the walk we started looking around the shops and we had lunch out um, and it was bookshop day today so i thought i'll try and hit as many bookshops in skipton as i can and i should say I tried to vlog a little bit of footage in each bookshop that we went to but I find it so awkward filming in public places and I feel like people who are bookshopping don't really want to feature in my vlog so I try really hard not to capture people um, and obviously you want bookshops to be busy and full of people buying stuff and you know making money for the book industry so yeah I tried just very hard to grab a little bit of footage here and there of the bookshops we were in. So. The first bookshop we went to was the Oxfam bookshop and we bought two books there. Um, should I start with yours? Yeah. So this I is the book dragon. that all chose. It's called Dragon. Um, it's about a girl and her dragon and they, they have to find an orb. I don't really know why actually, but they have to find mm -hmm. this orb and they have to go through challenges to get to it. Because it's like a good fantasy adventure book. So all chose this one. Um, and this was only £2.50, so I love a good second-hand bookshop. And then I chose, quite randomly for myself, a book called The Quick by Lauren Owen. And this is the first time where I've ever bought a book mainly because of the quotes on the back. As a rule, I hate when the blurb is not here and instead there are quotes of other people telling you how good the book is. Most of the time that annoys me because I need a bit more specific information. But it just so happens that this time, it just so happens that the two people who've put, uh, who have given quotes are people who I quite um, respect um, and would value their opinion on and that's Hilary Mantle and Kate Atkinson. So they're two writers whose value I appreciate. So Hilary Mantle says about this book, a sly and glittering addition to the literature of the macabre. As soon as you have breathed with relief, much worse horrors begin. Or much worse horrors begin. And then Kate Atkinson says, Suspenseful, gloriously atmospheric, and a feast of gothic storytelling that is impossible to resist. And you know what? If those are the vibes of this book, I want to read it. I did check out the blurb. I saw something about a brother and sister, Victorian Yorkshire, a secret society worlds colliding that those were the only key words i needed to know so there is a little bit of um damage here there's a bit of cell tape together um i did spot that but i always with hard bad i can't say this word today i always with hardback books check what the what it looks like without the dust jacket and this is rather attractive so there's just like a shiny owl on the front cover yeah, you can see it in just a moment, Ola. And then so 
cool. the spine also has like some just dark shiny um a little bit so there's the owl and the title and the author so i'll see how i feel once i read it but if i keep it i might be just ditching the dust jacket and having it like this because i think that is quite cool well, well uh, comment below which one do you think is better oh all it says comment below which cover do you prefer just black and mysterious or the actual cover art i mean the, the actual cover art is quite pretty too i like the cover art another shop we went to i'm not entirely sure how to pronounce this i think it's keo it's spelled k-e-o-u-g-h thing is in the english language o-u-g-h can mean an off sound an oo sound um so i think it's q it might be cough I'm not quite sure but it's a second-hand antique bookshop and we again got two books from there and um, the book that I picked was called The Guest Cat um, <laughs> there's a little bit of shimmer in the cat's eyes on the cover which oh, I think is really so cute. cute in this story there is an, a couple living in Tokyo who have quite a secluded quiet life maybe they're struggling to connect with one another and a cat just walks through the door and kind of adopts them and the cat visits them every day and slowly starts to change their lives. And then Orla chose a book too from this shop and she chose one of the Rainbow Magic Fairy books. There were seven there, you, wasn't there? If you live in England and have a little girl, you've probably seen these before. Or if you are the little girl that lives in England. <laughs> oh, the cat's come on. Hi, <laughs> comment. You are still you quite stopped. damp. There you go, you get a cat tail. You, you can use that. Oh, thank you. I'll give me the tea towel. So all the chose this one. There was quite a few in the shop <laughs> to choose from. There was like eight of them. <laughs> Why did you pick this one? Uh, because I just thought she looked the cutest. You thought she looked really cute. Yeah. Oh, is that the chocolate fairy? Is that what it's called? Clara the chocolate yeah, fairy. Clara the chocolate fairy. Ah, I like the sound of her. Already. <laughs> okay, and then the final bookshop that I want to talk about is called the Little Bookshop uh, in Craven Court Arcade in Skipton. Uh, again, this is a very sweet bookshop. It has a downstairs and an upstairs. Yeah, so yeah, let's start with the children's book we found first. So, I think this is a book that Daddy and all are going to share. Because like, you were looking in the kids' book section and we're looking at graphic novels because all is reading a graphic novel at the moment and she's enjoying yeah. it. So they were looking at the children's books and they saw this one which is called Lightfall, The Girl and the Golderan. And as they were flicking through, Rob was like, oh, this artwork is so pretty and so nice that Rob was like, um, I'm going to get this either way, whether Ola wants it or not. <laughs> oh, that's the book you've been reading? Yeah. This is a graphic um, novel that Ola's been Lushkin. reading. Lushkin. Lushkin. It's about a blue cat that's called, that just causes mischief and everyone's trying to look for him. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. So Ola picked this one, or well, Ola and Rob, and then I found this downstairs in the nature section. Nature Tales for Winter Nights, and look what's on the front cover. Foxes. That's your favourite animal mm -hmm. if you didn't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is a collection of short stories and short tales inspired by nature and winter. And I really like short story collections and I like nature, so I thought this would be a nice one to dip in and out of over winter. Bought these two, was happy with my purchases. And then, and dun, dun, then dun. I turned around and spotted this is all the little blind bag. Yeah, the little bookshop mystery bag. And so I'd already spotted these upstairs in the children's section. It was £10 a bag, it includes two books and a bunch of other bits. It says that all together it's worth £30. And I thought, oh, that's so fun that they're doing them for the kids, but I was a bit put out that there weren't any yeah. for adults because I kind of wanted one. Anyway, I went downstairs, bought my books, turned around, and there were ones for adults. Really wanted one. I've never had like a mystery book thing that I've chosen myself. Uh, and yeah, it's my birthday. It's bookshop day. It, it's not your birthday today, though. It's my birthday month. <laughs> it's bookshop day. I wanted to get a mystery bag. So, I have no idea what's in here. In the shop, all have picked it for me by doing it dip sky blue. Dun dun dun! I have no idea what's in here. Oh, I can tell you now, the books are big. Oh, that chunky. They're chunky, okay. <gasps> okay, you know I said earlier that there's a couple of writers who I really respect their opinion? Kate Atkinson was one of them. Yeah, but it was one of them on Yeah, 
So this book is called A God in Ruins. Oh, it's a big one. A God in Ruins relates the life of Teddy Todd, would-be poet, heroic World War II bomber pilot, husband, father and grandfather, as he navigates the perils and progress of the 20th century. Okay, so sounds like a biopic. Interesting. Like the tale of somebody's life and a historical piece of fiction. Um, yeah, I do like Kate's writing. I've normally just read her short stories, so it'll be interesting to read a full novel of hers. So, yay! Exciting! And then the other book. Ooh, The Architect's Apprentice. That looks cool, there's an elephant. There is an elephant, and it looks like so pretty elephant. on the spine. <gasps> so pretty. Oh, the back looks really pretty. Yeah. Okay, 16th century. It's Istanbul, don't know why I struggled to say that. A city of wonder and danger. When a young boy, Yahan, arrives with a gift for the Sultan, a white elephant called Shota, the pair are sent to the palace's menagerie. There, there they learn to guard against the scheming of animal tamers, gypsies, deceitful courtiers and the mischievous princess Mehirima. Intriguing. So I've got two kind of like historical fiction books there. Let's see what else is in here. Okay, oh, this looks like a tote bag. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I got a tote bag that says politics on the edge. What is that supposed to be? I guess it means that your politics are quite edgy. I don't know if mine are edgy. I might need to give this to somebody who's a bit more politically minded than I am. What, what does, what does politics? What does the whole thing mean? I'm not sure, to be honest. <laughs> there you go, tote bag. Okay, there's a little paper coaster, or I guess you could use it as a bookmark. It says, before we forget kindness. Oh, and it's a book. It must, it must have been a little um, point of sales thing for books. Uh, there's a bookmark called Bewitching Books. Oh, that'll be very good for Halloween. Which is good because it is Halloween in this one. Okay, there's some stickers with again slogans that I don't quite understand. Painting herself into the canon. The story of art without men. I guess this might be for like women's history. I'll show you what a woman can do. Claim your free £5 national book token. That's quite handy. So this is like more money now to spend on books. So now it's like the bag actually only costs five pounds because we get this, we, we can now spend on more books. Yeah! And we'll actually have to use it this time because we're terrible at having book tokens and not spending them. Oh, little cards. Now we got a Lord of the Flies postcard. That's quite funky. And oh, a nice card oh. with rabbit with a rabbit on or a hair. And that's a hair. Is there anything inside? No, just a nice little greeting card. Oh, can I, can I take you see that? And another one of these. Oh, oh no. Cute. <laughs> I would say my experience of that is that the books, definitely worth that. Especially with the book token, excited about that, very handy to have. I always appreciate an extra bookmark. The card is cute and always handy to have another greeting card. I'm not sure how far I would get with a Lord of the Flies postcard but I might use it as a bookmark. I don't understand the stickers or the tote bag. Normally I love a good tote bag but I, if they're gonna have like a political message I want to be like behind it and I don't know what politics on the edge means or what it's about. Same for these stickers I'm not quite sh well, I think it's just about women I, I guess I can google it. And these are quite cute I think again these can be used as bookmarks I guess they're meant to be coasters um, which I wouldn't use as a coaster because like they're cardboard they're not gonna last very long. But as bookmarks, they're kind of cute. Hi, it's about a week since my last update. And since then, I have finished two books. I've acquired two more books. And now I have lots of books um, to potentially read next. So let's first of all let's talk about the books that I have finished. I finished the strange and surreal stories of Walter de la Mer. Um, I really enjoyed listening to those stories. So yeah, they're just very good, very atmospheric, very much consumed with people's fears about death um, and really creepy people in them. So so yeah, highly recommend that if you want something atmospheric and spooky um, as an audiobook, that was really cool. And then I also finished Rhythm of War. I got there. It took me a while. Um, 
I am seeing Rachel this morning so I shall be able to give her back this book and I can't wait to see her and discuss it. And sometimes I text Rachel as I'm reading the books to like give her my immediate reactions but um, for like the last 150 pages of this I just I didn't want to put the book down so I just kept reading so Rachel doesn't know that I finished it and I can't wait to tell her this morning. We'll do a very full vlog into my thoughts on Rhythm of War and Rachel's thoughts and we'll get into all the nitty gritty details. I think overall what I say about Rhythm of War is for me it does have a pacing issue. There are times that this story drags and I just feel like it needs a good editor. However, saying that, the book does deliver. It really delivers and when it delivers it makes the hard slightly less interesting chapters worth it in the end it you know it's worth sticking with it delivers it's so satisfying um i really really enjoyed it and then i was showing you all the books i got for my birthday i've actually got two more books since then so my sister got me um the last murder at the end of the world because that was on my um reading wish list and she I, she has she has a list of all the books that I'm, I'm interested in getting and she picked one because I couldn't choose. Uh, so I, I've wanted to read this for quite a while. Again, it, again, it's another book where somebody's murdered on an island. It's my favourite genre, I'm going to keep reading it and uh, I'm looking forward to reading this one too. Still not tired of this setup. People on an island, somebody's murdered, we investigate. I love it. So that was from uh, a sister. And then my lovely friend, my lovely other bookish librarian best friend, uh, she sent me Women on Nature. So this is a collection of 100 plus women's voices on place, landscape and the natural world. So I love a bit of nature writing and I love anthologies so I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting into this one. I don't know if I'll read this cover to cover or have it like by my bed and dip in and out of it over the coming year. I haven't decided yet. I do tend to get on better with books when I just read them. Uh, so maybe I'll do that. We'll see. In fact, you know what, we're going to see right now. So, you can see behind me, this is my TBR shelf. So, seeing as I finished Rhythm of War last night, we're going to pick my next to read book now. So the way I most like to choose what book I'm reading next is to count how many books I've got then use a random number generator to pick which one it is. I, li I just I like the randomness of it. It feels like a lucky dip and all the prizes are good. So let me just do a quick count. Um, these books in the middle are my Doomsday book series. I can't read them because I'm actually missing the book I need next. So I'm missing the last book and I'm missing the book I need to read next, but I've got the rest of the series here. So at some point I need to go buy those two books. So I'm going to miss those out in this count. So, okay, let's see. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, 14 books. Let's do a random number generator. A random number between 1 and 14. 7. Okay, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, it's a Tolkien book! It's a Christmas Tolkien book. Okay, Letters from Father Christmas. Ah. I've looked forward to reading this all year and my mother-in-law bought it for me for my birthday. Uh, oh, yay, I'm so excited to read this because I need to continue my Tolkien deep dive and I want to wrap that up soon. So I'm really glad it's landed on this. Even though it's October, not quite time for Christmas reading yet. I don't care. I don't care, I'm going to read this now. I'm really pleased that this is my next book to read. I've looked forward to this for ages. Hello! This is my last entry for my October reading journal. It's been a really, really good reading month. Um, and before I go any further, how cute is my jumper? Uh, I got this from the Wildlife Trust and it's part of my birthday presents. My mum gave me a bit of money and this is what I've spent it on and uh, I love it. So books, 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 books. Let's get back to books. Um, I realised I never told you what happened with The Lost Bookshop because I started reading it and I got three quarters of the way through and then decided to DNF. 
this is one of those where all the key words were right magical realism bookshop historical um, a bit of romance island um, brontes i loved all of the ingredients but when it came together i just didn't believe any of it i didn't really believe in the characters i wasn't convinced by the writing i just realized i wasn't having a good time with it so I've DNF'd it. Maybe other people will love this one, but for me, it just didn't hit home. So, never mind. You can't win them all. So, I think I filmed last time that I was going to read Letters from Father Christmas by J.R.R. R. Tolkien. I have read this now. I read it in a day, maybe two days. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's full of stories of what Father Christmas gets up to during the year. And a lot of his stories revolve around his assistant, the North Polar Bear, um, getting into mischief and causing trouble. There's also some goblins that try and raid Father Christmas's um, gift stores. It's, it's so fun and it's so beautiful. And this edition has lots of um, J.R. Tolkien's illustrations. And it also shows you the handwritten letters uh, that he wrote. So all the letters are in print, but you can also read his original you know, calligraphy and see the effort and the artwork that he put into um, what he sent to his children. And it, it's just absolutely lovely. I am so glad I have this book. I think I'll be leafing through it every Christmas from now on. I think the thing that stuck with me most is as the letters wind down um, in the 1940s during World War II, um, there's just like a little hint of a little bit of bittersweet sadness in there because Tolkien's writing his final letters to his youngest daughter, who's the last one to grow up, and you get the sense of, you know, it's a chapter coming to a close. But it's just so beautiful that a father for 20 years wrote letters to his children to bring them a bit of Christmas magic. So this book is just full of love. It's just full of love. So then I read The Last Murder at the End of the World and uh, again this has been such a hit with me. So I've had a few books I've read this year that have been really strongly recommended on you know, Instagram and booktube and all that and then when I've read them I've been like they're not that great. This has also been highly recommended everywhere I've looked and this one was phenomenal. This one hit the spot for me. I loved it so much. So it's set on an isolated island in a post-apocalyptic world um, where a village commune has built up around an old military scientific base. Um, the rest of the world is covered in this lethal fog, but the island is safe because it has this special transmitter that is keeping the fog at bay. And on this village commune, there are three scientists from the old world who kind of remember how things were and then there's a village of inhabitants that have only known this new world then a murder happened and they have to solve it and oh and the whole thing is narrated by an ai intelligence that helps um, monitor and condition behavior on the island it's so good i could i couldn't put it down this is another one that i read within like two days because i just had to read the next chapter um I don't really want to say more than that apart from if you're thinking about giving it a go, do. I think it was amazing. I really loved reading it and I would definitely pick up anything else by this author, Stuart Turton. Loved it. Really, really loved it. And then the final book that I have to share with you in this vlog is that I am currently reading The Hobbit Companion um, by, who's this by? By David Day. So this is a beautiful book about how um, Tolkien created the world of the Hobbits. There's another cat coming to see me. This is Pablo. Shh, 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 Pablo. This is Pablo. This is not my cat, but he is very lovely. Oh, he doesn't want cuddles. What was I saying? The Hobbit Companion. So The Hobbit Companion by David Day is a book about how Tolkien used particularly language and wordplay in creating the Hobbits and their mythology. But the cool thing is, is that this book is just filled with absolutely beautiful illustrations and images um, of hobbits really well researched. It's just really good fun and a really sweet book. And I think this will be the last book I read in my Tolkien deep dive that I've been doing this year. Oof, that's been a lot of books, guys. Oh, look, Pablo's here.
You see Pablo? This is Pablo. He's our neighbour's cat and he's very friendly and he loves to come and get cuddles and make my cats really, really jealous. So that's all my reading this October. I've had a really good month, not just because it was my birthday, although that has helped a lot. Uh, yeah, I've just have read some really, really good books this month and I've been given a lot of good books. So, uh, so November is also looking like it'll be a great reading month. Uh, thanks so much for watching this vlog. Rachel's Reading Journal wrap-up is also out this weekend, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've had a really good October too, and we'll see you next time. Bye! A, com a comment does stack it if you think this one. Com a comment, um... Yeah, I don't know what you used to call it. Naked? <laughs> Don't comment naked on our on comment. our vlogs. We won't appreciate that. A com <laughs> a comment normal. Normal.